Holy Jesus. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, it's like a nightmare to watch. Hey Kai, how bloody loud is it this morning? Not loud at all. You got your earplugs in. It's so loud out here this morning. We've both literally got earplugs in. I've never heard cicadas this loud in my life. Just insane. They started about 4.30 this morning, just deafening noise drowning out. The and I'm going to cut in there with a voiceover because you cannot hear me over those cicadas. I've never heard them so loud in my life. I was just explaining that we arrived at this camp spot uh, about 10 o'clock the night before after we came off Mount Caramba and doing the commando track and three bears the day before. We headed to this camp spot because it had running water and we were very keen for a swim. We had a swim that night and we got to camp about 10 o'clock. We were in a very dry period at that time and this was the only creek of I knew in the area that was still flowing. Uh, we'd had big bushfires recently. Uh, thankfully they hadn't hit this area but they'd hit many areas nearby. And there was a fire ban at the time for outdoor fire use, hence why we didn't have a fire. I'm not going to give away the location of this camp spot because I know it is loved by several of the locals there as their little secret spot uh, and they have asked me not to give it away. I actually found it myself about two or three years back just through exploring in the area and it's one of my favourites to go to every time we go to Coffs. From there our plan was to quickly finish up this creek track which only had about another half a k, half a k or so to go. And from there we're going to head through to Pebwick Beach because it was low tide at lunchtime on this day to make that saltwater crossing and then have a relaxing afternoon at camp. But like always when you're full driving and adventuring things don't go to plan and it ended up taking us a little longer than we expected to get out of there. All packed up camp and making our way out of here now. We're heading along this little fun creek track, which normally got more water in it, but as I said, it's just so dry at the moment. We've still got a few nice little swimming holes and spots to get through along it. Um, but yeah, the noise on the camera is probably not going to be great because it's just got deafening roar of cicadas outside, as I said. So it's about as best as I can do. We've got a bit of a big hole coming up in front of us here now. I have to get out and see if we can get through or not. Yeah, this is an interesting hole this one, um, pretty deep out in the middle now, you can hug the side but you've got an angle lean, so try and creep our way along the edge and if it starts slipping in you can just kind of work with it and power out, put the rear locker in, first gear low range and see what happens.
racing in, but she went down. Woo! <laughs> you don't like that feeling of going sinking in water. <laughs> Oh, man. What are they? Okay. What I might do is if the others are going to come through, I'm going to hook my recovery gear up ready to whack it straight on them and pull that out. I should have had better recovery set ready. And I had all my recovery gear sat in the back. I put it up in there. It's already hooked on, but I should have pre-hooked it on. Anyways, let's go see how the others go. Now, I got a little bit hairy for me there, so we're going to grab the recovery gear out and get it ready to pull the next couple through should things go wrong. I'm going to put a bite on the mine and a couple soft tackles through the two toe points on the back. Dad's hooking up a snatch rope to the front of his. So I can just, we'll have someone standing here to ready to whack that, click that on with the soft tackle and I'll power him up out of there Should You don't want to be swimming in water. That's not good for anyone. Yeah, because I started slipping yeah. instead of trying to fight it. Because I know it. that trying to fight those river rocks, that it never works well. Yeah. Did you have it? You had everything off the floor, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. we haven't damaged anything. No. Nah. Nah. Just and it's only it's that's fresh creek water. Yeah. You can have a good clean. Yeah. Is that where it was? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it just sunk in that corner. Yeah. It felt so awful it was going over. Yeah. No, nah, it didn't look. It didn't look like it's going over. It just looked like you weren't getting out. Yeah. See, that's why it's hard to know, but that's why I just from experience trying to fight that river rock, yeah. you can't. So that's why as soon as I felt it, I just went straight this way. So you know, then I ended up right over here too, like, it's a hard one to know what to do. We're gonna pre-hitch pre it on. So drive your car up to the edge of the water here, and then we'll hook you on. I'll bring mine back. Brian went down really hard there, and <laughs> shut screws there, and had a fair bit of water in the car. Now we're just going to pre-hook that up. So I've hooked him up to here. So we've got two bridles. There's a snatch rope in the middle there. He's going to start driving. I'll start driving. That way pull him straight out rather than sitting in the water. Like we're all ready to go on last time, but you're still sat in the water for 30 seconds. It's car filling up quick. You all good, Dad? Yeah, mate. And then he just went straight up the side. Oh.
Well, I tell you, after that water crossing, we'd all had enough excitement for one morning, and we started making our way towards Pebbly Beach, where we're going to camp tonight. Pebbly Beach is in the Urugur National Park, about 45 minutes north of Coffs, and to get there, you've got a sand track that winds through the dunes for a little bit, and then you hit a beach run, a couple of k's up the beach, and then you've got to make the saltwater crossing over to camp. Uh, we've arrived at the Pebbly Beach saltwater crossing. We're just having a bit of a walk through and now trying to work out the best place to get across because this is salt water and you want to go drive through it very slow and through the shallowest part. So you can kind of get across anywhere here. There's a few little holes in it, but normally you can get across with you know no more than I don't know a few like half a foot of water if that. So that's what we're trying to achieve. Get a line across to work that out now. We picked the shallowest line across here. We think a little bit of a zigzag everywhere, but that's all right. You obviously want to get here low tide. Now this runs a little bit later than low tide. Um, so low tide was an hour 20 ago and it's still running out now, but I'd say it's going to turn pretty soon. And to get across this first gear low range, I'm not putting my foot on the accelerator. I'm letting my car idle across. That way I will only get water rotating on the tires. Get a little bit flick around the guards there, obviously. Um, yeah, if I don't touch the external this car idle up, it will not splash any water up underneath the car. Because you don't want to splash the underbody of your car with salt water. It takes you a couple of minutes to get across, but that's all right. So you're nice and slow, take your time, don't rush. And you will be good. Get to a beautiful camp spot over the other side. through to Pebbly Beach. Got a nice little campground here. It's quite busy being there only a few days out from Christmas. Normally that period before Christmas is not as bad as after Christmas. Like Christmas and New Year's is just a nightmare to go camping, especially well-known places like this. Pebbly Beach is a four-wheel drive access only national park campsite. You do have to pay to camp here. So for Kai and I, he was $12, I mean I was $12 for the night and he was $6 for the night, $18 for the night. Got a nice spot here set up with the yeah, you're six. So with three vehicles, yeah, we've got near lunchtime today with that low tide, and then we'll head out lunchtime tomorrow with that low tide. So you have to be very considerate of times and tide when you are coming here. A little bit cloudy today. We haven't really had rain. We did have a few spots of rain this morning, but being cloudy and that wind's picked up. It's pretty cloudy and windy too. It's not really a nice afternoon at the beach, but hopefully the morning's a bit better. The ranger who runs the place, he comes around and collects your camp fees off you once you set up. He sort of keeps an eye on things. You just got to bring cash if you to pay for it and pay for it. Been here a few times now and it's not, you know, today is not as nice with the weather. But it's still a beautiful spot, but you come here in good weather. Like this spot is all time. You got beachfront campsites. So you got basically, Perry Beach is like a little bay beach area. And then you just got back in the trees campsites along the whole thing. Some of them are back in the trees a bit and then some are more up in the front where you got those water views and you know you got the sunrise come up beautiful spot it does get popular and busy here but there is a lot of space um you know if you guys out for christmas there's still i'd say it's probably 80 percent full but there's still sort of a few scattered spots around the place
This is the Station Creek crossing across to Pebbly Beach at high tide. You definitely don't want to be trying to get across here now. You're talking anywhere from waist to chest, chest deep now across that whole river. There's where you come in over there and then you got to get all the way down to the exit, a couple hundred metres down the other side of the river down there. Oh, a dolphin down there. Hey guys, you know why it's called Pebbly Beach? Uh, that's not Pebble here, is it? Because of all the pebbles. They're not pebbles. The whole beach is made up of pebbles. <laughs> Ready to go for a swim? Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Get smashed! All packed up camp, we've driven down back over here to the river to check it out, see how the tide's going. It's definitely getting lower now. This is the old exit. So when you used to come to Pebbles, you used to come straight across from the beach and then straight, uh, straight across this river here and up the exit. You could drive down and then come back up, that's where it's shallow, but they've actually changed it. They've closed this one because too many people were just flooring it straight across. And it used to get very deep in the middle there, too many people were drowning their cars. People didn't realise you had to go down and come back up to it. Plus this steep exit here, people having trouble getting out. And then I think it got worse in flood damage. The good thing about Pebbles is wherever you are, you can kind of get out of the wind. So if it's a northeaster, you can go to one end, or if you've got a big southerly, you can go to the other end. Then you can come down to the river here, which is pretty tech protected as well, depending on the wind. Made it back out of Pebbly Beach and the Urigo National Park, and we came about 20 minutes down the highway back towards Coffs and turned off at Sandy Beach onto Johnson's Road and about to take on Vardy's Trail. Pretty interesting one from what I've heard. This is the first climb. This is the easier one, the harder one's up ahead. Shad had to go home, so it's just Dad and I, but then Mitch has driven out from Coffs again for the Arvo to come for a bit of a cruise up and take on this first hill, and then we'll see what's up ahead after that. Always get a little bit nervous coming into the unknown, especially out Coffs, because you know it's always going to be interesting. All right, here we go, this first hill climb, first ski low range, got that rear diff lock in. Nice and slow, up the top where the camera is there, there's a pretty big rut to contend with. You've got a left or a right hand line. Probably go for a left hand straddle because to the right, I don't know, it's a bit of a tricky one. It's a bit of a nightmare here.
Yeah, that's an exciting looking hill. Yeah. <laughs> and then you take a photo of it on your camera and it just looks like a flat Looks road. flat. So I got all the recovery gear there. Oh, and yeah. I'll put my Bluetooth in so my winch is ready to go. Okay, we'll just hit the main hill climb on Vardis and oh my goodness, you are looking at one steep vertical hill. It's a lot steeper than Commando. Steeper than Three Bears too, I'd say. And you got some nasty ruts and rock steps up this thing. Oh, I'm a little bit nervous. Hey? Well, hopefully I don't roll the car. Be trying my best not to. But I'm a little bit nervous being the first one up here, but we did flock in, first kilo range. Let's we start idling up and see how we go. Try and pick these lines off these high lines. a little bit terrifying. <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> This is steep. Too deadly it don't feel nice on that steep hill <laughs> you get more power to try and bolt jump you up but then like your car just starts lifting yeah where, where does it stop lifting i don't know you reckon we call a winch up this bit i can't really see much i can just see the car going for the sky <laughs> yeah we're gonna go for the winch like i just did not like how that was feeling at all um and better to be safe than trying to be a hero this this is ridiculously steep i'm like jammed back in my seat here with the bonnet up <laughs> literally vertical this is a steep hill this is very very steep i'm just waiting for that back to start coming up that step because the front is just skyward oh. i'm like when am i going to start leveling out Never. That was a little bit terrifying. Yeah, yeah, that's scary stuff, mate. That's scary stuff, especially when you've got so much traction and they lay on you to pick them right up. Yeah, like there's so much traction on those rocks yeah. and they just start heading for the sky. Yeah. Yeah, when I was winching then, like yeah. when I got on that point of the winch, like, I... You realise how up there you already are with the wheels on the ground. Yeah, like, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah the front wheel come up winching through here. Yeah, I felt that. Yeah. Well, even after that, when I dropped back down, yeah. and the backs were down in those holes there, and yeah. the front was up here, like, I was point like, I, that's serious steep. I, yeah. I think it's hard to top that for steepness. Yeah. I'm nervous to even watch Mitch drive it, like, yeah. Yeah. car roll over to it. And then Mitch was up next to give it a crack in his Hilux. He's running a three inch lift in the front and two in the rear. And he's running the exact same tyres as me. The Nitto Trail Grapplers 28575s on a 16 inch rim, which equates to about a 33 inch tyre. And then he has a rear locker on his Hilux too. This section of the hill climb here is very committing. The line that you have to take is quite scary and you do not want things to go wrong. Okay, right hand down. Okay, go back a little bit. That's put him in a better spot, hasn't it? Yeah. You're gonna come about just under a metre straight to get up over a little ledge. Once you get over that, you want left hand down, but only like a touch. Don't go too far. Maybe, I don't know, like a one-eighth of a, yeah, something like yeah. that much. Yeah, something like that. So, I'll call it, I'll go that way when you're ready. So when you feel that wheel, front wheel bounce over, that much that way. Left hand down a bit. Yeah, and go back a foot. Got there, right hand down. Yeah, try that. A little bit more. Yeah, hold that. Hold those lines back. too well and dropped in that right a bit. Ask if he can switch his lights off. Yeah. Mitch got caught up right where I did and had to opt for the winch. That part of that hill climb is honestly insanely steep and there's a few big holes on those rocks there too. It makes it very hard to navigate. <laughs> no, do you want to go? <laughs> I guess that you uh, skip three bears and the hard bit on commando, so you may as well give one of these hills a go. How do you reckon Pa's going to go on this hill? I was going to break, um, wait, what's it called when he broke his one diff or something? Yeah, diff. Yeah, he, this time he's going to break um, both, and then he, he's going to be halfway there and then he's going to break both again. <laughs> you got lots of faith in him. <laughs> So you're going to have two blind diffs, two days before Christmas, two blind diffs. No, so he's going to blow them and then we're going to assemble them back and then he's going to blow them again. Oh, nice. Because last, so he, he, he did one, then I said he would do two, so now he's going to do two twice. So you know how to fix the two blind diffs? Yeah. You just put them back together? Yeah. yeah sweet. We made up the first bit. And then last to have a crack at the hill was Dad in his Isuzu MUX, 32 inch tyres and open diffs front and rear.
That was like a pretty good line man, but it just didn't quite do it. So yeah, but come forward as you go left hand down. Yeah, that way, that way, that way, that way, that way. Yeah. That way a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Go left hand down. No. Just inch it back if you can. Yeah, a little bit more. You just don't have much room for movement. And you're maxed out like on flex. Dad made an almighty effort and was so close to making it up that big section there and just caught out as he was clearing the top of it. His car cross axled and then no locker front or rear, he just got stuck and couldn't go forward and we couldn't really take him back either, it was going to be too dangerous to reverse back. Once again, opted for the winch before having a crack at that section where both Mitch and I had to winch. Now with the winch for a quick pull up that near vertical rock wall there before he had that final step to navigate. Now I would say that this hill goes down as one of the scarier hills we've all driven in relation to how very, very steep it is and big rocks and ruts to contend with as well. Let's go that way a bit more. Yeah. Now keep in mind with these hills on these videos, as they always say on four wheel drive action, the camera never does it justice and it is the truth. These hills on the camera don't look steep and everything looks a lot smaller. The ruts look smaller, the rock steps look smaller. I've had people say to me time and time again that they watched one of my videos and then they went there in real life and it was just a completely different story. These hills out the back of Coffs I would rate as very hard and for experienced four-wheel drivers because things can and I have seen go wrong many times out there. so much fun out here so we made up that big climb which is a nasty one and then you know it's not too bad after that but it's still fun low range navigating the obstacles Good bodies are up the top and then we've come back out and we're on our way out of there now we're just going to pull up somewhere and air up the tires but that was one seriously <laughs> steep and nasty hill those couple of top sections like you're just looking at them you're just thinking like what what line do i do it just it's just one confusing hill i'd rate that hill climb is definitely harder than something like commando with commando you could actually pick your lines and sort of you could see a suitable line you just had to get up it Whereas those couple of sections, it was just real, yeah, it was real hard to pick your line. But that was a pretty, uh, pretty, you did a few good tracks this trip. I ticked off a couple of those bucket list Coffs Harbour tracks, uh, Commando, Three Bears, Bardies. Come back next time and do Jeep. I don't know, see what else we can come up with. Done more, but might do that again. This new nav <laughs> than the old one was a struggle, so we can to give that a go again. But yeah, now we're gonna head back through town. We're gonna head out to that same spot we camped the first night out in the creek there so we can have a swim and wash off because they're all very hot and sticky.
Arrived at our camp here, back out the bush behind Coffs, back on this river, super keen for a swim, but the cicadas are going again, it's very noisy. I'm going to set up my new Ironman awning because I haven't actually set that up yet, so I want to test that out. This trip, I kind of want to get everything tested out um, because we're off to Tassie in about 10 days for um, well, three weeks in Tassie, not on the road nearly a month. I'm going to test this awning out, set it all up, make sure it's all working and I know how to do it, it's all good to go. Coming on, coming on, coming on, coming on, coming on, coming on. Right, so it's got like a light attached there, you can kind of move where you want. Stays on there. I'm tired and I'm sorry. Cooking spaghetti bolognese for dinner tonight, but I forgot my billy. You know, I have to cook my pasta in the frying pan. Cook that, get that out, and then cook the bolognese in there. Finished cooking dinner. It's actually starting to rain a bit now. The rain's coming in, but the cicadas are backed off, which is even better. It's actually quite beautiful sitting here, getting peaceful. Listening to the rainfall on the awning eating dinner. What a good time, eh, Clive? I haven't tied this awning down yet. There's no wind, but I might. I can't imagine wind coming in out here in the middle of the bush down on a creek, but I might tie it down after. You know those rainforest things that go for like two hours and then just move because of a rainforest? Yeah. Um, we can make one of them. Rainforest video. Yeah. Had a beautiful spot on the creek here last night. These cicadas are just deafening again this morning. They start about 4.35 in the morning. We're going to pack up camp and then head uh, up the creek for a swim. A couple of spots I know. These are the cicadas. There's thousands of these up in the trees and they're responsible for making that constant deafening noise. See, there's the noise they make. Whoa. We found our little secret swimming spot out here. They call these magic pools. Magical. Run down, runs down the water, falls into these big clear pools at the bottom. Now, obviously, it's a bit slow today. Normally, you got more water and that, but still looking pretty good for a swim. Ready, Kai? Is it going to be cold? This is the latest piece of camera equipment. I got the GoPro 8, so I'm running the GoPro 8 and the GoPro 7 now. I'm going to try this GoPro 8 out in the water now, see how it goes. Back out of the bush and the cicadas now. It's actually started raining. <laughs> Perfect timing. The trip's ending has started raining. We need some rain as well. Everything is so dry. It'd be good if it just rained for a few days. Awesome trip. Time to head home. It's Christmas Eve, so head home for Christmas. A couple of new things with the camera setups. So that's the GoPro 8, which I leave mounted on the dash all the time now. And then this is the old GoPro 7. So I've got the GoPro 7 and the GoPro 8 now. GoPro 8 lives on the dash, that way I can just turn it on and talk to it as we're driving, it makes it easier. And this I keep outside the car, I use a little suction cup onto the car body for those like mounted car shots and then I have a little Joby Gorilla Pod where I mount it on the track for those little close up shots as well. I've also upgraded sound on mics too, so I'm now using the Rode Video Mic Pro, 
Uh, this is 250 bucks now. I'm using the, my old one sitting on the camera at the moment, which is the Rode Video Micro, about an $80 mic. I think under perfect conditions they sound pretty similar, but this will hopefully be better with distance and under like wind and a lot of noise and that. But yeah, this is like a battery, opera oh, ba battery operated one. You just have to remember to turn it on and off with the battery as you record, because if you forget to turn it on, you'll have no sound. Whereas the video, mi video Micro just runs off the actual camera and uh, turns on every time you turn it on. So hopefully this will help with the sound a little bit on the camera as well. And then that's the Video Mic Pro back on now and this is the Rode Video Micro. I don't know if it sounds any different right now. Um, but I'm probably going to put this one onto my little GoPro on the dash once the new media mod comes out for the GoPro 8 and then I'll mount this up so that'll give me better sound on the GoPro in the car as well. That's a little bit of a camera and sound update. Main camera I'm always using is the Sony a6300 on a 18 to 105 f4 lens and DJI Mavic Air is the drone. And while I'm here and we're taking it easy this afternoon, I thought I'd go through all this recovery gear we've been using because we've been doing plenty of recoveries the last couple of days. This is a new recovery kit I got from Drifter and this is all kind of like your top of the line recovery gear and rope these days. Um, but I went down to Drifter only a couple of days ago and Luke gave me a tour of the workshop down there in Gloucester and it's amazing how many people they have there working and the full set up, the gear they make uh, and just everything going on there but the gear they use is top quality gear. But I went down there to pick up this new box, this new aluminium alley box to go in the back of the ute. This is like our kitchen, utensil, cutlery, plate box. But it's a lot bigger and fits perfectly in that space compared to my, where my, my old one and it has a lot more room in it, which I can kind of fit all these extra bits and pieces in there. Now I'm fitting, I've got like six pack of beers in there, I've got my frying pan in there, I've got my gas cooker in there, I've got all different things in there that wouldn't fit in the old one, so free up bits of spaces in the other. But yeah, the recovery gear, so he gave me, we've got a few soft shackles, these are sort of the way to go now, those soft shackles rather than your hard shackles. A couple of 14 ton ones and a 20 ton one and a bridle, those are those bridles we're using today for those recoveries, that way you're pulling off two recovery points so you got a nice even pull rather than jerking one side of the vehicle. And then that was that extension rope, we used that a bit yesterday. Extension rope rather than straps, these ropes, um, all these ropes are obviously a lot lighter, you know, compare that to your steel shackles and then this is lighter and smaller than a strap. And a little just kind of lighter and easy to use. Now is that ring to get that snatch ring double line pull. We are using that yesterday too. This is that snatch rope that we used in the river there this morning. So with your ropes, I've been through them before, but they're just 30% elasticity compared to your straps, which are 20. So you've got safer, uh, more effective recoveries. But comparing all this gear that comes like in such a small bag and light and easy like you can easily pick that up carry it down the hill to set up pretty much anything you need for your whole recovery comparing it to like say you know a different sort of recovery bag that has your hard shackles and your big um your big snatch block you got heavier ropes heavier everything you know you're talking double the weight and a lot more room it's just so easy to use this and then this is the new factor 55 winch hook these are an american company um, but rather than your hook, the main thing with these are these are a closed system, so they don't have a clip where the winch, where you like clip it onto things. This you're using, you can use these on your hard shackles or your soft shackles, and straight through there, and then nothing can come undone. And then the other thing with these is they sit up uh, a lot nicer on your fair lead there, so you can kind of sit it right there, and it's good out of the way. It's not going to rattle or move. Rather than trying to find somewhere to hook it onto, and if you you can hook your they kind of slide your winch hook back into there, but then they rattle around and they damage, they nick the end of your fair lead. Then when you're winding rope in or out, you get cuts on your rope and then your rope breaks.